breakfast on Dubai Eye 103.8. We've been speaking to small business owners this morning, everyone from pedal court owners to hair salons, about what they've seen in terms of disruption. We're hearing from several that they've got to close, whether that's because of clients or staff not being able to get to premises or water issues. And we've been wondering what recourse they have insurance-wise. So we're asking Alfred. Avinash Barber is the CEO and the founder of insurancemarket.ae. I won't hum it to introduce him. Morning, Avinash. Hi, morning, Randy. So tell me, and I realise that it's going to vary from sector to sector, but in general, what insurance do SMEs here in the UAE generally have to have in place to be in business? Sure. So um, for SMEs, we tend to uh, recommend packaged policies, which are kind of all your essentials in a box. Um, there's special packages for the F&B sector. There's others for retail uh, for offices. So uh, that would cover uh, a bunch of things, starting from the core property, all risks, uh, all the way down to workman's compensation, business interruption, and other associated insurances as relevant uh, for that uh, sector and industry. How much of it is mandatory and how much of it is discretionary? Most of it isn't mandatory as such at the moment. Of course, you have obligations as per labor law, as far as workmen's compensation is concerned and things like that. But it's not that you have to buy the insurance per se. Um, but considering, you know, for a small business, this is sometimes even a couple of hundred dirhams a year, or it could be for a, even a slightly bigger business, a couple of thousand dirhams a year. It's a no brainer, really, um, because, you know, the coverage spans oftentimes across millions. So, as someone who sees these policies, these transactions going through, what companies are buying for insurance, how well covered here are smaller companies against things like flood damage? I think, um, you know, it, it differs from sector to sector. I think the more white-collar industries have done well, um, but there's a lot of um, kind of gaps in coverage uh, with extremely small micro-businesses, if you like, and um, even in the blue-collar sector. What about business continuity? Do you see companies, when they buy insurance, buying those extras? Yeah, it's it's a mixed bag. Uh, generally, uh, a more medium-sized organisation will seriously look at covers like business interruption, uh, loss of rent, machinery breakdown, um, you know, uh, but when it comes to micro businesses, although these covers are available, very easy to put in place, um, they often tend not to and they'll go for kind of the bare minimum uh, that their principal in business or, or their what they're contractually obligated to put in place, such as just a basic public liability, uh, when often not realizing that for a couple of hundred more, if you talk to your insurance broker, they'll be able to throw in a lot more cover for you. So seeing the videos that we're all seeing on, on social media and the news, etc., again, given your visibility into what people are buying in terms of insurance cover in the, the SME sector, how well insured are we? Um, like I said, you know, it's a mixed bag. It depends on each sector. I think the FMB sector is pretty good. Retail is pretty good. Uh, offices, uh, there can be a lot of gaps. And, you know, from what we saw, we're seeing claims around property damage, uh, the, just the physical flooding and structural damage from the weight of water ac accumulation, uh, damage due to leaks, you know. Um, so so buildings and contents insurance is crucial. Um, then obviously the, the stock and inventory uh, could be lost due to, you know, water damaging things se severely. Um, so whether you're a retailer, manufacturer, supplier, you need to have a, a policy in place. And like I said earlier, it's typically a package policy, uh, which will have most of your requirements in just one box. So what do you expect the volumes of claims from this week to look like? Uh, we've had we've had uh, quite a few reported, not as many, obviously, as on the car insurance side. But, um, you know, we've uh, seen uh, restaurants, uh, you know, have major leaks. Um, there have been bursts, um, exhaust bursts and things like that um, at, at uh, various different types of businesses. Warehouses are obviously concerned about structural damage uh, from the water. So uh, and, and, and of course, uh, also the loss of uh, stock and inventory and the associated uh, business interruption 
uh, you know, the, the time it may take post an incident like this for you to get back into business and the loss of gross profits as a result of that. What have we seen with with past rains and incidents in terms of insurance companies' willingness to to, to stump up? Um, what's the track record on this like? No, look, generally um, insurance companies have been keen to pay claims unless there is a clear case of, you know, breach of good faith, as it were, if there was a clear sense of misrepresentation or non-disclosure or, you know, post an incident, um, you know, the facts don't add up. Um, but unless there is any behavior like that, we've seen insurance companies be extremely supportive um, and uh, the partners we've worked with have, have always paid up. It's not been an issue. What's the usual turnaround time, though? Because if you're a small business, particularly if you've been closed for a couple of days, it's all about the cash flow. Right. Um, it varies from incident to incident, as you could imagine. Um, oftentimes for smaller claims, uh, you know, we're able to uh, just in a, in, a, in, in a week or two uh, have, have it paid out. Um, for larger claims, if a loss adjuster is involved and then just the physical act of, you know, doing what it takes to indemnify the client in terms of doing all the fixes and, you know, that it does end up taking some time. Um, but, we, we, you know, we try to manage clients' expectations based on each scenario. Uh, very quickly, 30 seconds, what do companies need to be documenting and doing now? Um, after an incident, you've got to make sure you, uh, you're firstly, principle of loss minimization. So you've got to make sure you don't make things worse. You take all of the actions necessary to, you know, uh, have the damage controlled, as it were. Uh, you've got to take as many pictures as possible. Um, and uh, ideally, we'd recommend that you um, hire a professional assessor straight away to just get a sense of everything that's happened um, and, and the repairs that will be required. Um, and then talk to your insurance broker straight away. Let them know you, there might be a potential claim. You know, give them all of the information and then uh, have them guide you on what else needs to be done uh, just to make sure that you have a, a very strong case uh, when you file your claim. Avanesh Baba, CEO and founder of insurancemarket.e. Thank you for your time this morning. Dubai Eye 103.8 Traffic. With Yas Island Abu Dhabi. Stay at iconic hotels and play at...